Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Marika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and, and a galactic astrologer. Today, I have our my beautiful guest, Louise Platt here. And I would love to for you to get to know her. And, and today, Louise and I are going to explore uh, and how we can navigate this frequency shift that many of us are in and experiencing right now, but also how do we make our way into, you know, our maintaining our, our uh, mundane lives, if you will, if you call it mundane, but, you know, work, kids, uh, cooking dinner, doing the laundry, all of that. So welcome, Louise, to this conversation today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's really, it's a joy to connect, definitely. Yes, I'm so excited to have this uh, talk with you. And um, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about frequency and uh, and vibration, if you will. And it, it is really a buzzword these days. <laughs> so I, I want, first of all, before we get into all the, the fun conversation, I'd like you to introduce yourself. Who are you and what you do you do, Louise? Okay, so hi, so I'm Louise. Um, I'm based in the UK. I live about an hour north of London. And um, I, like you, I'm a galactic astrologer. Um, I did the same course that you did, which is how we've sort of connected with one another. Um, and I've been doing it professionally for over a year now. Um, but along with that, I also um, do energy work, um, sort of clearing energy, tarot, oracles, sort of um, intuitive work as well um, so I have um, that's kind of I would say one side of me but um, on the other side I also work in a school so I work as a teaching assistant I do that part-time alongside the astrology and I'm a mum to two teenagers um, you know married kind of in a kind of normal <laughs> normal life I kind of I tend to keep the um, two parts of me a little bit separate although they are starting to merge a little bit more now but certainly historically I haven't really gone around telling people you know what I'm interested in and what I'm what I do necessarily so um yeah that's kind of in a in a nutshell yes and what a great introduction to the topic that we're going to talk about because it is really what many of us are experiencing this the side of us uh, that is high frequency working with other realms uh, intuitively and and expanding that way but at the same time we have you know our families our friends the the daily routines and the things that we need to do every day mm -hmm. so how do we navigate that so i i love that we are coming together for this conversation today so let me ask you this, Louise, first. Why do you feel that this topic uh, is relevant uh, to co have a conversation about today? Um, I think for many people, um, a lot of people, well, a lot, a lot of people are waking up to the fact that there is more to life than sort of what we can see and touch and feel, sort of that 3D reality. Um, I've been awake for a long time but it's been a slow and steady and process but I think a lot of people are starting to realize that um you know there is more to them and um with the um as, as part of the ascension of the the actual frequency on our planet rising and the impact that that is having and sort of almost forcing people to wake up I think it's very relevant because a lot of people are going to be um especially if you're coming to this you know not late in the day but if it's sort of almost an overnight awakening you know you're going to have some really sort of big questions about what on earth is going on um so and I think you know we can see around us that things are shifting and the old is breaking down and then um, you know it really does help to have a bigger picture perspective and maybe a, a sort of a deeper understanding of why that is um you know because I think well certainly that's helped me but I know it's helping a lot of the clients that I work with as well so yeah we are going through a massive shift um, and a lot more people um, are looking for information about, you know, what is going on and why and how can they sort of, you know, get through it, so yeah. to speak. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel the same that it's it's highly relevant because those inner questions are arising, right? And, and often... Mm. 
we um, believe that, oh, I'm the only one that this is happening, or I'm feeling yeah. this or that. So um, our Luis's and, and my intention for this conversation is really to provide some, uh, you know, examples and support and reassurance that uh, how can we navigate this? And and uh, maybe if you're watching or listening that you recognize yourself in some of the, the things that we talk about and maybe get some some new support or ideas that that will, um, you know, support in the future and, and as we move all move forward. Uh, let's start from the from the basics. How do you define mm-hmm. high frequency? Because I, I know that some may be like, what is she talking about? Yeah, or or you may may also, if you're watching or listening, like, oh, I know exactly what they're talking about. For me, um, it is about a level of consciousness and awareness. Um, I think anybody sort of with, with a higher frequency soul, if you like, is carrying a lot more light within them. Um, and um, it is... For me, again, it's having that understanding or just deep knowing that there is a lot more to life than what, you know, what you can touch about this kind of physical human personality persona. And um, it's kind of understanding that we are, for first and foremost, a soul um, or a, a light and we're having a human experience. So this is not sort of where it starts and stops. Um, you know, a lot of more high frequency souls have got a multidimensional um awareness that they maybe you know maybe maybe remember or just you know really believe that they've had lifetimes or or experiences elsewhere and and also it's about sort of knowing that life is happening sort of for you and through you rather than to you so um you know it's um sort of rather than sort of being the victim and the poor me and you know everything's going wrong understanding that when you do come back across challenges that actually they're opportunities rather than blocks um so I would definitely say that and um I'd say high frequency souls tend to have um a really strong connection to the earth and to humanity and to nature you know a real sort of compassion um for everything they tend to live um more in flow so again it's about life happening for you and sort of trusting um and sort of knowing you know I mean we could talk about this later but I things come at me out all the time that I don't expect I'm just like okay I'll just go and do that because you know I kind of trust that it's happening for a reason um and also um well sensitivity sort of psychic and empathic gift kind of come you know as a package but also um feeling that um you're not necessarily from here and that you don't fit in and that you know people don't understand you and you don't understand other people and the way people behave and the way you know what's going on out out there I say sometimes I just think (laughs) yeah everything you said resonates with me and I think the the high frequency um for me that type of it's a it's a perspective but also it's a it's a way of of uh living in a sense because Mm -hmm. it's it's for me at least it's been a journey from maybe not resonating as much with a high frequency way of living but rather Mm -hmm. uh, because you know we we all come from a place and we're here to learn something uh, so on on that journey can also be like a staircase going up. Yeah. So yeah. at least that's Level. my experience that that's kind of it's not for for some it's a it's an opening of real realization um, that goes very quickly and for some mm-hmm. it's more like the slower kind of pace going at it. So <clears throat> it's 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 great to to trying to kind of see, okay, how have our lives changed when, when Mm. we're living a high frequency life versus, and some of us have that perspective of how it wasn't before as high frequency, but how is it now? So how was that journey for you? Was it more of like a a immediate realization or was it more of a journey for you? It's been a really long, quite slow, sometimes frustratingly slow journey. Um, I'd say because I'm 50 now, and I'd say, um, although as a kid I sort of 
you know, was into ghost stories and, you know, believed that there was more to, um, you know, that you did go somewhere when you die. And it wasn't until my early 20s that I started learning about, um, I don't know, a more spiritual um, pathway. And, um, and it wasn't until my early, well, early 40s that I found out that I was starseed. So I've kind of been, each, it's just like, it's like layers of an onion, a little bit at a time. Yeah. But I can see now why that had to happen because I think you know if we're thinking about um like um coming here to have a human experience and obviously we, um I didn't mention having a sense of a mission or a job to do or a really strong per you know wanted to know what your purpose is because again that kind of comes up so often with my clients and it was something that was really really driving me um but you know, part of being here is actually to experience what it's like to be human and to have those setbacks and those challenges and the emotions and you know. And I think a lot of um, high frequency souls often, before they come in, they almost set themselves up to experience lots of different lifetimes in one because they want to get the most out of this kind of it's an opportunity. The way I see it now, I didn't, I didn't always see it like that. Um, but yeah, it was slow. It was steady. I did a lot of things, um, a lot of different jobs and a lot of different courses and workshops before I kind of found what I call my niche. But I can see now that everything I did all feeds into what I'm doing. And it's kind of, you know, it's really nice to have that perspective. Because at the time, I kind of, so my energy was definitely doing the work for me, but I wasn't yeah. doing that consciously. So it's clear that it's not just like one way of, of doing this or, or going along on this staircase and raising our vibration or raising our frequency, it can mm. be really through uh, daily or um, real life experiences that we yeah. do this. And I think sometimes that's the misconception that it's not really in this real life, we are experiencing a high vibrating uh, environment it's it's kind of somewhere mm. over here <laughs> but yeah and yeah you're bringing in I think that is one thing that I've learned um that has hit me really strongly um because I've again from my early 20s I was like I've got a really important job to do I'm, I've got a mission and I, and I used to think I know that word coming from so it's a strange word to choose um but I just like I need I you know there's something I need to be doing it's important and then but I just could not identify what it was and um I think what I've realized is for so many of us um the mission or the purpose of being here is actually to bring our energy and you know whatever frequency we're coming from and bring it down into the physical because that's what's needed that's what the planet and that's what humanity needs so it's like um I guess we're kind of acting like conductors of energy in a way but we can only do it by actually being here in the physical so um you know the kind of just being human and having a normal job sometimes is actually that's enough and you know I think sometimes people go well it can't be because you know it feels like so much I need to do more I need to do more but actually that is that is enough just being here and living and being as much in your body as you can so which we'll talk about again in a second yes. Yeah. If you were to if if you were to pick one thing <clears throat> or maybe mm -hmm. two that you feel <laughs> yeah. is the biggest difference that you um have experienced between you know if you look at this beginning of the staircase and and where you are now what's the biggest difference that you would um, call out Well I think for me just understanding and being able to see how again I don't have all the information yet and I'm sure what well, I'm hoping more is going to come in because um it comes in drips and drabs but just having that understanding of um why I'm here it's taken the pressure off a bit because it was really quite intense <laughs> for a long 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 time um so and I think again you know it might be an age thing but just seeing um just feeling grateful you know for my for my body and my you know just kind of because again you know I think we all go through this I hate well it's a bit dramatic but you know not liking yourself and not feeling confident and you know low self-esteem you know and all of that so I kind of feel I've moved through all that 
Um, yeah. But yeah, that, that bigger perspective is like gold. <laughs> I'm so mm. grateful to have that now. Yeah. So it was really yeah. when you're, you, you found, so to say, or, or could identify with your purpose here, but also yeah. Uh, yeah. appreciate, you know, the little things, uh, what we call the yeah. little things that are actually the big things. The, they are, you know. are and, <laughs> yeah, I know. And I think sometimes people don't want necessarily to hear that, but um, it's, you know, it's becoming more and more obvious to me that, um, you know, because the earth and the energy can't shift without some support, which I think is why a lot of us have come here at this time in particular. Um, so, you know, and we are needed. And I think as well, you know, when you're going around, you know, I work in a school, you know, I, I did a lot of um, like classes in village halls when I was younger, you know, and just by myself in a lot of places, a lot of people. And I, I kind of looking back, I think actually my energy was working, you know, I was, I wasn't doing it consciously, but I was clearing energy. I always ended up in very toxic environments with some quite challenging people and quite challenging situations. And now I kind of look back and think, oh, I can see exactly why I needed to be there. Um, it wasn't much fun at the time because I didn't realise that's what I was doing. And, and, you know, I wasn't very good at clearing my energy at that point. So, yeah. Didn't yeah, and, and that brings me yeah. to the next question in terms yeah. of the lessons, right? What we have yeah. had to learn, because part of part of our conversation today is like how how can we navigate this? And there, for for me at least, there's been some clear lessons in terms of mm. how I manage my energy that I've yeah. learned along the way, and and sometimes I feel yeah. that that's really also, uh, you know, a skill or skills that we need to kind of either learn or teach others in, in this mm. life around how to manage that. Because part of, uh, you know, living a high frequency life is to choose that higher frequency. But it's also like, how do we, how do we uh, teach ourselves to do that and there are many ways so we want to give some nuggets to to our listeners and viewers today on like what is it really that we need to to learn uh, and many times oh. it's not what we've learned in school <laughs> so oh, <no. laughs> so what would yeah, you say I... would be a a lesson or a skill that you've learned that supports your high frequency living today um gosh there's so many things so I might I know. <laughs> my, my important one just one um oh here comes the lead thing um I would say um for me um boundaries having boundaries and um sort of protecting your energy and because when you when you've got more light um a lot of people are attracted to you and you can end up taking on things that aren't yours. And one um really good tool that I learned in one of my many courses that I did um was if you are feeling a strong emotion or you're feeling rubbish, you know, or depressed or sort of out of uncharacteristically or unexpectedly different from what you would normally feel. Um, a really good tool is to ask yourself, does this belong to me? Um and I mean, I don't know um, if your listeners will be familiar, but I tend to read my body. So if it, if I feel light, I kind of rising up, that's usually a yes or a heavy is um, feeling is a sinking feeling is a no. So, um, you know, if I get a yes, it does belong to me. I know then it's my duty to, you know, process it and deal and work through it. But if it doesn't belong to me and I'm just taking it on to someone else, which in early years I did all the time um often without realizing I can just clear it and let it go and it's um you know so again kind of recognizing when things are yours and when they're not because as empaths and intuitives we tend to almost feel responsible for other people and you know and taking on stuff that really yeah. doesn't serve us um so yeah so protecting your energy having boundaries and just knowing when it's um I'm not saying, I mean, it's not a bad thing to take stuff and clear stuff for other people, because again, that's one of the reasons, certainly I know I'm here, but if it's having a detrimental effect on my well-being or your well-being, then um, yes, that's not good. It's not supposed to be bad. Um, and I would say um, 
it's come into your body as much as possible so you know however you do that whether it's through something like yoga or dancing or stretching but try to and um try to be outside and sort of ground to connect with the earth again um that's that's really important um and try to kind of experience things through the senses because um you know when when we kind of do leave this this physical realm we won't get to do that so again it's about um kind of recognizing what a gift it is to be here and to be in this physical body instead of like putting yourself down and thinking oh you know my knees <laughs> you know, doesn't work or i'm not this enough or i'm not that and um, sort of really i connect with what a gift it is um you know to be here and and to uh yeah to be experiencing it even when it is it's it, i wouldn't say it's easy being in a human body <laughs> so <laughs> actually not if you've not done it many times before so um but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it's about yeah being in your bodies but keeping that vibration high but bringing it down because that's where it's needed yes oh beautiful kind of lessons and skills to to truly harness because sometimes it's it's all those things that we may not prioritize as much because they they're mm -hmm. it's that that daily basic connection basically to to this yeah. realm that is so important to maintain and yeah and it's i i love that you bring up one thing that you brought up was you know the the gauging the temperature so to say through your emotions um, yeah is because sometimes i feel that some are not really connecting this high vibrating uh, life with the choice in terms of reaching for a higher emotion if you will and it, yeah. it really is linked to the emotional world uh, to a large part right so uh, it's a great tip to gauge uh, how we're feeling based on uh, you know where we're at vibrationally as well and and yeah. what can I do to actually feel better or or genuinely from the inside feel um, more joy, for example. And sometimes it takes an intentional uh, action or a decision to to bring ourselves there. It's not like you said before, it's not it's gonna happen to us. It's like <laughs> we're in charge of that vibration. So we are often very anchored in our 3D world, right? We've talked about yeah. that and, and what we can do to to raise our vibration in, in a 3D world. But Part of this is also how we are starting to relate to a 5D, <laughs> more uh, wider perspective of who we truly are. And what I'm talking about here is relating to our past lives or relating to parallel lives, relating to um, ourselves as a soul and knowing mm. that is and and starting to kind of get the the color and flavor of that and and bring that into daily life and I, i'd love to hear your perspective of how you are navigating that connection that you have and and many high frequency souls have uh, i do too but it's part of this ascension to start relating to our our bigger self if you will uh, so i'm curious to to hear how you are navigating that on a daily basis. Um, yeah, I would say um, having doing, doing the galactic astrology and sort of looking at my chart was like groundbreaking for me because I knew I'd been told, I don't know, just about nine years ago through an Akashic reading that I was a star seed. And at that point in time, I'd never even heard the term. So it was completely new to me. But it, when I sort of went down that, I was like, okay, I'm going down that road of discovery and, you know, and, and learning. And it all, things started to really just kind of drop into place. Everything started to make sense. Like, okay, you know, suddenly I see why I feel so different. Um, but yeah, the, the course itself and, um, you know, looking at my chart and being able to decipher it and kind of see where, where I might have been and what um, star systems are really kind of really strong, you know, I've got a real strong affinity to. 
um, has been life changing. Um, so, um, yeah, I'd say learning about myself has been, yeah, for sure, the best, <laughs> yeah, yeah, most important thing so far. And- you know, we're as we are wrapping up this conversation, I would love to give our wa- watch, <laughs> watchers and listeners some tips, some practical tips from you um, as yeah. we are kind of wrapping up here. Um, what would you say, Louise, would be um, your top three tips for someone who is hearing and and watching this conversation and say, Hey, this is me. I I recognize myself in everything you say. uh, But I feel um, a little bit stuck or I feel kind of that I'm not hundred percent trusting my abilities yet, or I haven't really gained uh, all the self awareness that I I'm desiring to do. What would you your top three tips for someone who would like to step into high frequency living and actually feeling that they're um, navigating this 5D, 3D world a little more smoothly? Mm. Um, I'd say for me, having sort of a connection to other like-minded souls, well, people that kind of get what you're maybe going through or what you're thinking is invaluable and I know that's not always easy because I seem to have positioned myself <laughs> in, in my in my life um where a lot of the people close to me my family aren't sort of don't have the same level of consciousness shall we say so um it's taken me a while to find my tribe and to find the people and a lot of people that I've connected with who I would consider to be soul family I've never actually met in the flesh so you know we're really blessed to live in an age where we've got the internet and we've got Facebook and there's so many groups out there so um you know and you never know the person next door might be (laughs) you might be on the same page but you just never actually broach that subject so yeah try and find sort of people that you can talk to and and um you know don't think you're not alone you know you are absolutely not alone you know I know that for sure because and um yeah what am I telling you my other tip I mean obviously you know there's so many books there's so many websites there's so much content and information out there but again it can be quite hard to you've got to use discernment that's really important um but I think for me again it takes a lot of trust <laughs> um but just put it out there you know talk to your higher self or you know if you have guides or even if if you don't sort of believe in that just set the intention that you need that you will find the right people to help you find your way because there's so many of us here you know with actually this is why we're here we're here to sort of as way showers and help people discover who they are so and the right person will come along at the right time when you know when you're ready to find that next sort of level of information so setting an intention because I know it can you can feel really isolated and I have been there I have felt like that um as you sort of start to realize there is more to life and and um I think you need to be quite careful about what you consume and I don't just mean you know I'm not saying you need to go on a crazy diet or anything but it's about um exposure to sort of toxic people toxic environments toxic information um you know because as you start to raise in frequency and become you know your and your vibration will raise because it's happening to all of us (laughs) it's not something that um we can sort of escape um you're going to find if you're sort of watching really like negative stuff or you know mixing really negative people or eating really heavy dense foods you're, you're not going to feel good so um you know it's, again it's being mindful about what you take in you know like the new mm, such well. great great so, tips yeah. uh, such great tips uh, louise thank you so much yeah and um thank you. so uh, good to talk about this sort of stuff yes it, it's <laughs> so good because it's it's something that is, um, you know, part of our lives. It's mm. part of our daily lives. And there's always this um, questions sometimes that come up and it definitely is a journey. And mm-hmm. the journey is really to be anchor it, uh, our experience here in the now. Yeah. And I love that you're bringing up, 
you know, the uh, connecting the boundaries with, with different choices that we might want to make in terms yeah. of eliminating toxicity, if you will. And sometimes that happens naturally, but to be mindful about it, that we can make some conscious choices around that is, is really mm -hmm. helpful because mm -hmm. it, it brings yeah. uh, our stronger boundaries uh, are built that way as well. So yes, I love that. So thank you, Louise, for this beautiful, uh, yeah, enlightening I conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed it. So thank you so much. And uh, so where can we find you, Louise, if if somebody wants to reach out to you? Uh, where can we find you? Yeah. Um, so um, I've got a website called spiralbright.co.uk. And then I'm also on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook as Spiral Bright Insight. So um, yeah, those are my uh, those are my social media so yes, yeah everyone go welcome. go check her out <laughs> yeah I do and, you know if you want to I do you know I'm not if you do email me you know I will reply so um yeah you know even if you've got questions or you just want I don't know to pointing in, in a direction um yeah I know I've obviously got content on my YouTube channel about grounding and protection and cord cutting and all the you know sort of the tools that really are valuable so yeah please beautiful go so out. go go and check out Louise's resources on her website and youtube channel and uh, so thank you everyone for being here with us watching or listening this yeah. episode today a uh, new light living podcast will be back soon with another episode have a wonderful rest of your week your day your month and we'll see you soon bye-bye mm -hmm.